Father in heaven, be with us throughout this midday power surge is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this midday power surge, Tuesday, May 31st, 2022. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Save to Serve International, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. This lesson broadcast is going to be a continuation from yesterday's. We have been focusing on the signs that point to the nearness of great totalitarianism as well as the coming national Sunday law with persecution for God's commandment keeping people. And all these signs show us the nearness of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we need to be found physically, mentally, and spiritually ready. On yesterday, I left off dealing with the WEF. And today, I'm going to share with you what they stated in their most recent forum convention. And they have acquired the proverb or the idiom, no pain, no gain, expect great crises. And many of them are going to be manufactured. Order out of chaos. Listen. To accept that there will be some pain in the process. Uh, the pace that we need will uh, will open up for missteps. Mm. Uh, it will open up for uh, shortage digital energy. It will create inflationary pressures. And maybe we need to start talking about that, that that pain is actually worth it. Because if we don't, uh, there's no business yeah. case, okay. there's no economy, there's there's no welfare. But but so far, I think we are have been a little bit careful actually talking about the pain in the short term that is likely to come from, from, the, from this the very changes. important yeah. change. Yeah. See, it's all abstract to them. It's all abstract to them. Oh, yeah, the pain, the pain. Yeah, it's going to be there, but it's all worth it. Because if we don't have pain, then there's going to be no climate and no economy and no world, and we're all going to be dead. So it, it's go along with the green agenda or die is basically the message. And, and if you're a business owner that can't afford to uh, pay your electricity bill or your heating bill, a load of good, this, oh, but it's all worth it. It's all worth it. It's all going to be good in the long run. A load of good that message is. Mm. So what will some of this pain look like? We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. Mm -hmm. Well, no pain, no gain. Well, my idiom is uh, no cross, no crown. What do we need? Strong faith in these last days. Get that book, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3. And page number 67, no cross, no crown. Notice, and yesterday we looked at the WEF stating, people need to go vegan in order to save the planet and that they will monitor how you travel, where you travel, what you buy, what you eat, to see who is compliant and who is not. We're developing through technology, an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. How many of you believe that last phrase? from J. Michael Evans of Alibaba stating that we do not now have this technology. Do you believe that? Let me move on. And the same WEF stated that people need to eat insects. Let me correct that. 
There's a movement now on foot stating that people need to eat bugs, eat insects in order to save the planet. Which is it, my friends? Look at this right here. Now, you have to go and take a look at what we covered yesterday. I cannot reiterate those points. All right? Now, notice. Here it is. Fresh off the press, May 30th. Kids to explore eating bugs to gauge appetite for alternative protein. Alternative protein, it says. But children at four primary schools in Wales, that's in the UK, are set to take part in workshops organized by scientists and teachers to inform them about the benefits of eating alternative protein like bugs, edible insects. Now, what is the purpose of this? Red words underlined. A study in the journal of cleaner production found insect farms emit 75% less carbon than poultry farms. Eat bugs. Eat insects, number one, for protein, and number two, to save the planet. Now, this I'm going to share with you is one of their paragraphs in this piece. And friends, it is not humorous, but we are being told that people every day are eating bugs and insects, whether they know it or not. How many of you like chocolate? All right, take a look at this, my friends. It says, everyone eats insects every day. There is over 30 parts of bugs in every 100 gram of chocolate, grams of chocolate. Hmm. Please forego that. Then it says it's also in bread. Well, bake your own bread. Fruit juices. Stop drinking that. Or make your own. All right. Notice here, my friends, then it says how many people, millions of people, ate insects and bugs last year, all right? And how many will be eating bugs and insects by the year 2030? Why do they love that year, 2030? Well, the number is 390 million people will be eating bugs and insects by 2030. And of course, they mention various cultures, where eating bugs and insects are a part of their culinary traditions. All right, my friends, what would the scoffers and cynics now say after hearing and looking at this report? I've heard some people say nothing is wrong with eating bugs and insects because the Bible says that God gave permission to his people to eat insects such as locusts. Let's take a look at that, friends. How would you respond to that? If someone were to ask you, but what about Leviticus chapter 11, when God told the Hebrews that they could eat locusts? It's right there, friends. Leviticus 11, verse 22, it's right there. And the warning is given in verse number 23. Remember, my friends, that that was simply a temporary diet. That's number one. Number two, what about John the Baptist? The cynics and scoffers and mockers will ask, and even some individuals who are sincerely seeking for knowledge. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 4 that John the Baptist ate locusts and wild honey. How would you respond? What did that locust represent? Well, by the way, since Leviticus 11 was simply a temporary diet, we must get back to the original diet, the plant-based diet from chapter 1 of Genesis and chapter 3, verse 18, 19, the herbs of the field. Let me get back here. The locusts that John the Baptist ate, the Bible, spirit of prophecy, history, and also the study of medicines and plants show us that this was not animals or insects, it was from the vegetable kingdom. Look at the statement here from Maranatha, page 22. John the Baptist diet was purely vegetable, all right, of locusts and wild honey. Friends, locusts, as in an insect, is not a vegetable, all right. You could read the rest of that. It's time to educate the people in, the, in regards to health reform. All right, my friends. 
May I move on from that? Now, how many of you are familiar that there is a locust plant, a locust tree? That locust tree is also synonymous to the honey locust tree. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Educate the people who are sincerely seeking for knowledge. There it is, the locust tree. It has a fruit on it, pod-like fruit, all right? And the pod-like fruit, we're told, is similar to carob. Do you know carob? So while many people are eating the bugs in the chocolate, blue words on top, all right? What about carob? I wonder if they would tell us in humor, right, that the carob also has bugs and insects in it. I digress. Take a look at this, friends. There it is, locust plant. And there it is again, the honey locust plant. You could do the research and read. You'll see it, friends. Notice here. It's like a bean pod, like, like a legume. That's the honey locust fruit of that tree. There it is, honey locust. All right. Notice here, friends, how to make carob or honey locust pod powder. Right there. That's what John the Baptist ate. It was a vegetable, a purely vegetable diet. And brothers and sisters, it's just ignorance when people promote eating bugs and insects in order to receive alternative protein. That's mere ignorance. Now, friends, I am not a scientist, and neither do I profess to be one. And I'm not inept. I know what truth is. And I do know that amino, amino acids comprise and make up protein. We don't need to eat bugs and insects as so-called alternative protein. In the book called Proof Positive, and by the way, brothers and sisters, it's right here in my hand, Proof Positive. This book right here by Neil Nedley. There's a chapter in that book with the protein myth. Protein myth. There it is, friends. 20 amino acids. All right. There are 12 of the 20 the body makes, your body and mine. Eight amino acids are called essential amino acids. That means we must get that from our diet, the foods that we eat. Now, what type of foods, plant-based foods, com contain amino acids? If they contain amino acids, brothers and sisters, ding, ding, alert. It has protein. Now, before I share this with you, how many of you know what plant-based foods contain amino acids, i.e. protein? Put those in the chat. By the way, take a look at this, my friends. There it is. All right. Sweet potato. Do you like that? Baked potato. Brown rice. Tomatoes. Do you like tomatoes? Pumpkin. Whole wheat flour. Well, make sure it's not GMO. Amen. Corn. Yes, but make sure it's not GMO. All right. Corn. Do you like corn? Organic. You grow your own. Road oats. All right. White beans. How many like asparagus? All right. Also, broccoli and many others. They contain amino acids. All right, friends. Protein. Don't you forget that. Protein. Very, very important. And just as I'm going to share something with you, and it is a, a quick video clip, audio clip, just to drive home and emphasize a particular point. As God's people, let's spend more time reading what is essential for our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. There is a so-called proverb, colloquial statement that says, if you want to hide something from a particular ethnic group of people, race of people, we're told, put that thing in a book. I read somewhere that if you want to hide something to an African, put it in a book. 
because Africans do not like to read. And I thought that that, that was pretty insulting. So when we got our radio, I decided that I'm going to read books to our listeners to teach or try to reach the youth and make them understand that they have to read. But we started with simple... And now let's remove the African people and put in its place, all right, don't forget that in lieu of the African people, just put professed Christians. We don't like to read. How many attend churches without a literal Bible, brothers and sisters? How many? How, how many professed Christians? Even SDA. Let's get back to reading that which is important for our spiritual and physical, mental well-being. All right. Get back to the books. Start reading the books of the Conflict of the Ages series. Also, the nine volumes. Testimonies for the church. Yes. Ministry of Healing. Yes. Steps to Christ. Get back to these books. History. All right, friends. Now, many people, they don't like to read. And additionally, many professed Christians and people in general are not watching the signs of the times. And they would receive the same rebuke that Christ gave to the people at the first advent in Matthew chapter 16, verse 2 and verse number 3. Let's take a look at Canada as I segue. My friends, I believe that Canada is the quintessential draconian nation. If you want to see what's going to happen in many nations during that Sunday law crisis, look at Canada right now. Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, his government has voted against a conservative motion to end the pestilence 19 restrictions for travelers and revert, revert to pre-pandemic rules. In other words, they are still on lockdown in Canada. Think about that. Let's move on. This is now breaking news. Justin Trudeau announces national freeze on handgun ownership to stop people from buying and selling the weapons anywhere in Canada. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. There is a time and place for everything. And I know this issue is very controversial within and without the churches. I know that. Let me tell you something. There's a time for God's people, husbands, fathers, to defend their family. There's also a time wherein we put the sword in its sheath. As Christ told Peter at that specific, particular hour of crisis, can I not ask the Father? And he will send 12 legions of angels. All right. Amen. This is a national Sunday law crisis when church and state unite to capture and persecute God's seventh-day Sabbath-keeping people, God's commandment-keeping people. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Smoke screen. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. Again, it's so shameful, so shameful how they are looping in Something that has nothing to do with Canada, this American tragedy, and making this about somehow Canadian gun control and Canadian handgun ownership, which most people in this country don't understand. Gun owners in this country are a minority, so politically it's a very easy group to beat up on. But it is embarrassing 
and shameful and pathetic that the federal government is introducing firearms legislation that is not needed to answer a problem that does not exist because lawful handgun ownership in this country is a non-existent threat to public safety. People are going to be shocked. I mean, they won't probably won't pay attention to it because the media won't cover it, but people are going to be shocked in three, four, five, six years' time when this law is on the books and they wonder why gang shootings in Toronto and Surrey and Montreal and Vancouver haven't gone down at all. And they're like, but, but, but wait, I, I thought the government banned handguns. And someone will have to say, no, 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 they only ban legal handguns, not the ones that criminals are using. What, what's wrong with you? You thought we were going after those guns? No, not at all. Mm, 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 mm. Brothers and sisters, and now in that same enactment, that policy stated that there is going to be a permanent alteration of long gun magazines, that those magazines will hold no more than five rounds imagine if that law was ever to be suggested in the united states of america and will require the permanent alteration of long gun magazines so they can never hold more than five rounds these are actions that doctors experts and chiefs of police have been calling for for years and we're acting on their advice. Mm -hmm. And friends, in that same speech, he mentioned that this is all about freedom. If this were to come to America, how could this be about freedom when you're also trampling upon the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution? It's not freedom, it's tyranny. In our country. And this is about freedom. People should be free to go to the supermarket, their school, or their place of worship without fear. These people should be free to go to the park or to a birthday party without worrying about what might happen from a stray bullet. Gun violence is a complex problem, but at the end of the day, the math is really quite simple. The fewer the guns in our communities, the safer everyone will be. Hmm. So take freedom from one group, all right, and give it to another group. That is just pure uh, drunkenness, pure insanity. And secondly, I must add, note carefully, my friends, he stated that this is all about freedom. Freedom for whom? Notice what this goes on to say, brothers and sisters. I want everyone to see this. Very, very important. It's all about freedom. Now, what's going to happen to these targets? These venues, these areas, they become soft targets. And by God's grace, where we are should not be soft targets. While we pray and while we move forward, we must expect as I make this transition, I'm going to digress from that point. I was going somewhere with that. I pause. Let me continue now. Now, as I saw this article, I remembered what Jamie Foxx stated. Blame Christians for the school shooting massacre. Blame Christians. At the end of this, I'm going to share with you the application for God's faithful people in these last days. There it is, my friends. Jamie Foxx criticizes so-called Christians. He says, little angels, my heart goes out to your families. Never thought I would live in a society, a Christian society, where they would let little children die over and over again and still not change any laws. If the people in this country are leaders and so-called Christians, if they are going to heaven, I'll pass. If they are going to heaven, I'll pass. Hashtag, the devil is busy. You know, friends, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 14 and verse 17, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 9, that a angry person 
speaks foolishly. Don't you allow, Mr. Fox, don't allow what other people do or not do as an used to be used as an excuse for you not to surrender everything to Jesus Christ. Do not compare yourselves with others, yourself with others. Second Corinthians 10 verse 12. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 verse 20. Repent, Mr. Fox. Be converted that your sins may be blotted out to meet Jesus Christ at the second advent. No excuse is going to be worth worthy in the sight of Christ if you are found holding on to known sins. Brothers and sisters, here's what I have to share with you. This is Emperor Nero. Just as uh, Jamie Foxx said, blame Christians. We are told, red words, Christians were falsely accused of the most dreadful crimes. Let that sink in. Accused of the most dreadful crimes. This chapter is entitled in the book Great Controversy, Persecution in the First Centuries. Listen to how the chapter concludes. It says, there is another and more important question that should engage the attention of the churches today. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. Why is it then that persecution seems in a great degree to slumber? Why? Answer. The only reason is that the church has conformed to the world's standard and therefore awakens no opposition. It is only because of the spirit of compromise with sin. Because the great truths of the word of God are not so indifferently regarded. Because there is so little vital godliness in the church that Christianity is apparently so popular with the world. Let there be a revival of the faith and power of the early church and the spirit of persecution will be revived and the fires of persecution will be rekindled. Christians were blamed for those crises. In Luke 23, verse 1 through verse 3, Christ was blamed for dreadful crimes in the land. Acts 24, Paul was blamed for dreadful crimes in the land. Where did Christ tell the disciples to go, to follow him too, just before the hour of crisis, Gethsemane? Fasting, praying, Gethsemane. And that's why, friends, on June 5th, this coming Sunday, one more reminder, it's a day of fasting and prayer let them make me a sanctuary and we begin at 3 a.m eastern time send in your prayer requests we will continue on tomorrow by god's grace sister henriquez what's that song of the hour pass me not O gentle savior Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, Savior, Savior.